You puny little scumbag. I can't believe anyone would want you. One thing's for sure, you sure ain't gonna be seeing your home son ever again. Hey, Nigel, let's get back to it, huh? We got things to do and places to go. Now, just sit there and be still and be quiet, little man. I've got some things to finish before I finish you. Hey, what the fu- I don't want to see you move another inch or I'm gonna slice you into nice little bite-sized pieces. Now can it? A beautiful thick shag carpet of pelvis Brelsford, the rock and roll programming sensation, adorns the east wall of this grungy apartment. It's the popular pin-up alien Krill McPherson, the one that poses all over time pods in Space Piston magazine. Just watch that McPherson strut. <laughs> it's one of those wads of lard you ran into at the inn. Due to the planetary location of this unit, it can't keep a steady picture for very long. And, as is universally known, the local cable company will get around to fixing it at their convenience. And who knows, you might get lucky and get another shopping channel or country western station in the process. You are now a proud nail owner. Good thinking. The nail proves to be just what you needed to free yourself from those handcuffs. Don't get all excited, little Red Riding Hood. You aren't out of those woods yet. You carefully lay the rug on the floor. Even though you were never known for your interior decorating talents, you feel very satisfied with the location you have chosen. Your body is now carrying a nice static charge. Wow, the static energy you built up discharged, frying Lard Boy's circuitry. Did you actually think of that, or was it just luck? This alien woman looks to be in very bad shape. Her pupils are fixed and dilated. Her body is stiff, almost as if she's dead. And her skin looks tight and puffy, as if bodily gases are building up inside her. Bandages and patches appear in profusion all over her, and some of her seams look like they're about to give way. You make a mental note to come back and rescue this poor woman.
smooth move. You've got his key ring. There seems to be a small pile of CD-ROM sitting here. Your search through the CDs reveals a bunch of typically boring multimedia magazines. A multimedia phone book. Too bad there aren't any phones around here. The Outpost Project Survival Guide. Successful People Managing Techniques by Carm Trebus. Funny, it's empty. MF DOS for idiots, morons, and feebs. Touring Xenon on five buckazoids a day. Discovering your inner maggot. How to become assigned to being a corporate creative genius without really trying. Hmm, this might be worth checking out. It's a copy of Popular Tektronics. The room seems to be vibrating very slightly. This would probably indicate a damping field in operation somewhere close by. Either that or someone downstairs is using a pro shiatsu. You have no idea where this place is, but it's nice to see that grunge has finally hit the interior decorating industry. This symbol is all the rage among teenagers in the quadrant. None of the adults knows what it means, but it's shorthand for no sign of life. This little unit is a portable dehumidifier. When you're a guy like Singent, who sweats like a bicranial crud snorter, you need one of these things going all the time. It's a burlesque moddy. This is the data quarter you got from that endodroid hunter dude. You now possess the Mahdi. Well, 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 the worm is out of the hole. So, you have to ask yourself, do I feel lucky? Well, do I punk? A box of moddies, behavioral modification, Euro circuit chips, lies under the desk. You poke and prod amongst the moddies until you find a Mahdi labeled Churlish. Being intrigued by the word, you glom it. Incidentally, you might want to look up the word Churlish before you do anything stupid.
The corner of the label in this Mahdi seems to be loose. Thinking it was the churlish Mahdi, he pops it in place. It's Nigel's belt, complete with a damping field actuator and a nifty personal grooming assistant. That's an interesting idea. Not a good one, but interesting nonetheless. Yuck! It's the hair you pulled from Nigel's personal grooming assistant. A massive subspace neurotransmitter fills the desk. Amplified by brainwave patterns, neurotransmissions are not affected by local damping fields. But you already knew that, right? This box is full of daddies. Daddies are modules which, when inserted into intracranial slots, give the user complete knowledge of whatever topic is programmed into that particular daddy. This appears to be some sort of control room. There's a landing platform beyond the damping field induction coils in the archway. No, that's just... It's the belt that big guy was wearing. It's the damping field actuator. If you want to open it, you'll have to find the button. Didn't that Sally Struthers Learn at Home course teach you not to stack components on top of each other? It would appear... Didn't that Sally... Didn't that Sally Struthers... This circuit...
Here's your fish! Stellar, you picked up my homing signal. Uh, I can't believe I actually made it work. Now no one can say I spent a little bit too much free time in the bathroom with Popular Tektronics. Popular Tektronics, who are you trying to kid? I know what you were reading in there. What was that voice, Roger? I thought I heard something. Pay no attention, Stellar. It was probably just a mechanical flatulence from the ship. Anyway, we received a transmission from a nearby Starcon communications monitoring platform. They told us of some unusual signal originating from the area of polysorbate 60. We dialed it in, scanned the coordinates, and found you. So what are you doing in this sector, Stellar? I thought you were stationed on the SCS Heinz 57. I am. I had some leave accumulated and decided to take it. Uh, this is kind of embarrassing for me. I actually came to see you. I've been thinking about you a lot lately, and I was curious about what you'd been up to, so I decided to visit. And when I arrived here, I found you had just left for shore leave on polysorbate. I decided to follow you down and try and catch up with you. When I got to that dump of an inn and found you'd been kidnapped by those thugs, I searched around, but could find no trace of where they'd taken you. That certainly is a strange place. I decided to beam back up to the deep ship and try to locate you through your transport communicator signal. When I'd returned, I found you'd left it up here on the ship. I didn't know what to do then until that call came through from the Starcon installation. You're a lucky man, Wilco. Uh, yeah. I, I guess I am. If you hadn't gotten there when you did, I'd probably be a victim of some serious cement poisoning after those geeks chucked me off that balcony. Terrace. What? Well, actually, it was a terrace. Whatever. Thanks, Stellar. I sure owe you a big one. I'd sure like to collect that sometime. But let's talk about you and me. Perhaps I could take you to dinner sometime soon. I'd like that, Stellar. I'd like that a lot. The thing is that I kind of have a kind of a relationship with another, and I wouldn't feel very comfortable about that. I mean, it, it wouldn't be fair to her. You understand? Not to mention the fact I'd be wearing my sphincter for a necklace if Beatrice ever found out. I hope you do understand, Stellar. I like you. I, I think I even more than like you. I, I don't know where I got this inordinate sense of loyalty toward Beatrice. I believe the word that explains that is fear. Pound sand, pal. Please know that were the situation any different, I'd be making that date with you right now. Oh, I see. Friends, co-workers, buddies. That's all this is going to be. I guess I knew it somewhere inside. I just didn't want to believe it. I guess I admire your trueness of heart, however misplaced. But I feel much more inclined to damn you for it. I know that's selfish, but it's how I feel. I must admit it shows something more about you, more depth of character than I gave you credit for, Wilco. Well, I'm patient, if you ever have a change of heart. Well, Roger, uh, we, should, uh, we should see what we can find out about those subhuman walking dumpsters that had such a keen interest in you. I don't suppose you heard their names. No, uh, but I did get this neat personal grooming assistant. It needs a little cleaning, but... That's great, Roger. Don't clean it, though. Take it to the sick bay. There's a DNA analyzer there. We can scan the contents and perhaps use the results to get some names and information about these guys. Good thinking, Stellar. I probably would have thought of it, eventually. 
Yeah, I'm sure you would have, Roger. Look, I've got to go to sick bay and get some treatment from my back after that not-so-graceful rescue. Oh, yeah, that. Uh, sorry. Well, uh, I'll see you there. Commander, I am receiving a message from Starcon. Computer, on screen. Hello, Commander Kilbasa. I have a new directive for Deep Ship 86. This is actually a special request from me, Commander. As you may know, I served with Admiral Blundfang during the Fallopian Campaign. Admiral Blundfang's widow is involved in building an off-world retirement community. They are almost finished, but have requested assistance from Deep Ship 86. Commander, please extend her every courtesy. You know, if things go well, this would not look too bad in your personnel file. I will let Sharpay, the Admiral's widow, explain further. Hello, Commander Kilbasa. As Admiral Toolman mentioned, we have almost completed our project here, but could use Starcon assistance. To be honest, Commander, I pulled a few strings, but this is an important mission, I assure you. Since you are scheduled to be present for the dedication of the Golden Light Years Retirement Center anyway, I hoped you might alter your travel plans to accommodate an earlier arrival. From the information provided me by my old friend, the Admiral, you would be able to warp here within a few hours. I require some assistance from your ship as well as one of your crew members. Allow me to explain. Meanwhile, back in sickbay, 